Am I the asshole for not letting my daughter go to her homecoming dance? My daughter is 14 and a freshman in high school. Me and her mom have split custody. She came home from being at her mom's for a week and wrote homecoming on her calendar and starts talking about all the plans she made with her best friend to go to the homecoming together. Homecoming week happened to fall on a week that she's with me. She starts raving to my wife and I about the dress her mom took her to buy and that she's matching with her friend. She even bought a ticket already. I was furious with her entitlement to just make all these plans without asking me first. I can admit it's not just her fault, but her mother's as well for not clearing it with me before buying her the dress and ticket. In fact, I wouldn't put it past her and the mother to have bought the dress and ticket before asking in order to force me into letting her go. I want to teach her a lesson about asking first and not assuming I'm just going to let her do what she wants. Am I the asshole for not letting my daughter go to her homecoming dance? I want to teach her that she can't manipulate people in order to get her way. I told her that if she asked first, I would have been happy to let her go to the homecoming dance. But since she decided to make plans and buy stuff before even asking, I wasn't going to let her go. She cried and told me that you only get one freshman homecoming and I told her maybe she should have thought about that. I said all of them are the same anyways and she has three more opportunities to go and she's not missing much. She sulked in her room for the rest of the day and didn't talk much. I tried to comfort her but my wife said not to because I'd be teaching her that I'll give her my attention if she acts up and cries. I went to comfort her anyways but she rejected me. This infuriated me more so I left her in the room to cry alone. Her mom was furious when she found out and demanded I pay her back the money she spent. I said absolutely not because she didn't clear it with me. Am I the asshole for telling my wife to stop acting like she's too good for a local dinner? Today was my youngest daughter's birthday, so we asked her where she wanted to go for dinner. She said that she wanted to go to Denny's, so that's where we went. Our daughters ordered burgers and waffles. I ordered a steak and my wife took a salad. She kept complaining about the food, saying it wasn't good. I tasted some of her salad and it tasted fine to me. I asked her what the problem was and she said that the dinner wasn't good enough and that it isn't as good as the restaurants we usually go to. She likes to go to high-end restaurants. I took her aside and told her to stop acting like she's too good for a local dinner and to suck it up for her youngest daughter's happiness at least. She got mad and said that I'm being rude to her and this restaurant was really cheap and just not good enough. I gave her the car keys and told her to drive herself home. Am I the asshole for telling my wife to stop acting like she's too good for a local dinner? She didn't like her food and I told her to suck it up for our youngest daughter's happiness at least. She got mad and said that I'm being rude to her and this restaurant was really cheap and not good enough. So I gave her the car keys and told her to drive herself home and get dinner for herself from a high-end restaurant of her choice. I told her I'd get a cab for myself and the kids. She stormed out of the restaurant. When the kids asked where mommy went, I told them that Nana called so she had to go but she'd make it up to them with ice cream. We had dinner, went to a movie, and took a cab home. When we got home, I put them to bed because my wife hadn't returned yet. I called her and she said that she'd be at her mom's place for the night. I think maybe I was too harsh on her. My daughters rarely get to go places like this because my wife hates them. I met my husband four years ago and it was love at first sight. He was a widow and he had a daughter now 17. It was tough to deal with. I won't lie, but I wanted to be with him so badly that it didn't matter. We got married two years ago and we've had our struggles, I won't deny, but overall it has been a very happy, love-filled marriage. At the beginning of our relationship, I was really jealous of his late wife. He had pictures of her around his home, his family loved her and talked about her, his daughter the same, his friends the same. It was tough and I was comparing myself to her. She was beautiful, successful, and intelligent. She was a great mother, friend, wife, whatever you can think of. I know that people don't like to speak ill of the dead, but I believe them when they say these things. I spoke to my then boyfriend about these feelings and he even took down some of the pictures later in our relationship. Still, his house has never felt like my home as it felt like it was still hers. When we got engaged, we decided we would buy our home and we moved in right before we got married. During the moving process, I found box after box of old photos and other materials. Photos of his ex, family photos, photos of them together, baby photos, everything. Some of these were Polaroids, they were so old. They had been together for many, many years and had so much history together. I don't know why at that moment I snapped, but I did. There was a box of her things and I donated some of the items and threw the rest away. I even went onto the computer and deleted photos he had stored on there. At the time, I felt like I won maybe. I don't even know what I was thinking this would accomplish, but I did it. For the past two years, my husband hasn't noticed. My stepdaughter turns 18 soon. She's a very intelligent girl. She graduated early, goes to a top tier school, and is very well adjusted for someone who lost their mother so young. We have never been that close. I care for her, I do, but she never opened up to me and has never viewed me as a mom to her. I understand, but it hurts. Anyway, my husband's mom wanted photos of her as she was putting something together for her. He went to look for them and as you can imagine, they weren't there. He asked me about them and I admitted everything to him as I wasn't going to lie to him. He's very angry at me and can barely look at me. I've asked him to go to marriage counseling but he refuses. I'm 13 weeks pregnant and I'm trying to manage the stress. He's devastated, not just for his daughter but for himself. I know he loved his late wife very much and if she was still here, he'd probably still be with her. He's been in tears half of the time when he's speaking to me and he won't sleep in the same room as me. I've tried to explain that I felt guilty ever since and why I did it but he doesn't care. He asked me what he's supposed to tell his daughter. Some of the materials that I donated and threw away were really important. 
I know that I screwed up. I know that I need to make this up to my husband and his daughter, but I don't know how to. This was such a monumental screw up on my part. I've always been jealous of her and did not handle my emotions correctly. I tried to track down photos of her by other people, and while I did find some from his parents and her friends, her parents died when she was young and she was raised by her grandparents who are now dead. There aren't many out there. I love my husband and I want to fix this more than anything. I know that I'm hormonal right now and my mind is wandering around to every outcome that could happen, but what if this is the end of my marriage? I can't let that happen and I need to fix this. What should I do? So the death of Vincent Van Gogh just does not add up to me. So Vincent Willem Van Gogh was born March 30th of 1853. He was born in Zunder, Netherlands and was the oldest surviving child of Theodore Van Gogh and Anna Carbentis. He had five younger siblings, but he was closest to his little brother, Theo. While he was really smart, he ended up dropping out of secondary school and started his art career at the age of 16. He became an apprentice for Goupil and Company. This was an international art dealer in which his uncle was also a partner with. He first worked for them in The Hague, then in London, and then moved to Paris. He was ultimately dismissed from the company around 1856, two days after his 23rd birthday. And he honestly spent the next five years really trying to soul search, find himself. But in 1881, he ended up having to move back in with his parents. I relate. His brother Theo, on the other hand, who had begun working for the same art dealer, ended up rising up and becoming a manager. And he took charge of sending Vincent money and supporting his brother. But everything changed when Vincent was sent to the psychiatric hospital. Don't cancel me for this, but whenever I went to go visit the Vincent Van Gogh Museum in the Netherlands, I took this picture of one of his self-portraits. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do that. Well, Vincent was feeling bad that his brother had been supporting him for so long, so he decided to pay him back. He would send his paintings to Theo in Paris for him to sell. But his work was not what people in Paris were looking for at the time. A lot of his stuff was kind of dark and grungy. And during the next five years, he continued his soul searching and started a failed art collective and just kind of wandered around Europe. But this is when his artwork that he's known for today started to form. His paintings got a lot lighter, his brush strokes got a lot shorter, and he had very colorful subjects and self-portraits. But as his art improved, his mental health declined. And famously in 1888, he ended up severing his own ear off, wrapping it up as a present, and sending it off to a SEGS worker. He was admitted into a hospital until 1889, but then checked himself into a psychiatric mental hospital in May as he continued to struggle with mental health. And during his one year stay at the mental hospital, he made his most famous masterpiece. So Vincent Van Gogh's first week in the asylum, he started to paint the irises, which was in the asylum's garden. And this piece of his is iconic. And Starry Night, arguably the most famous piece in the world, depicts the view from his window in the asylum. It was just enhanced a little bit by his imagination. And when his little brother Theo and his wife ended up having a newborn son and naming it after him, Vincent sent his famous painting Almond Blossoms as a gift for him. In the mental hospital, he made about 150 paintings. And in 1890, his work was finally starting to receive some positive reviews. After being released from the mental hospital that May, he moved to Auvers, France. That way he wouldn't be super far from Theo's family. And this is when Theo told his brother that he was thinking about starting his own business. But Vincent was so worried because Theo had supported him for so long that Theo wouldn't have the money to do this business. And on July 27th of 1890, Vincent took his easel, his painting supplies, left the inn that he was staying at, and came back wounded. And to this day, we thought he did it to himself. But so did Vincent Van Gogh actually shoot himself? It's important to realize that no autopsy ever occurred and the exact location of the shooting was never identified. There's also five unaccounted for hours from when he left the inn and from when he returned. He had literally went out for the day to go painting, brought all of his equipment with him, come back, and the people outside, including the owner, saw him limping and holding his abdomen. So when he went to go check on Vincent, Vincent opened his shirt so that he could see a bullet wound in his abdomen. And he really stressed to not accuse anyone of it and that it is I who did it to myself. Which, why would you stress to not accuse anyone? His brother went to go check on him that night, and at 37 years old, Vincent Van Gogh passed away, leaving behind nearly 1,300 works of art. And the theory that we're all taught is that he's a troubled genius who shot himself in a wheat field. But revolvers were so rare during this time period. No one would even admit to selling it to him. No one could find his art supplies afterwards. And no one could even locate the gun. So I do not think Vincent Van Gogh took his own life. Vincent was even quoted condemning this kind of action. He was very religious and called it moral cowardice. Also, if you were trying to do this, it doesn't really make sense that you would go for the abdomen. And there was no bullet exit wound, which means that someone must have shot him from a distance. It was thought that he did this, passed out, and woke up, and that's why he couldn't locate the weapon again. But his wound wasn't very bloody at all, so it doesn't make sense that hours had passed. There was also no goodbye note and just no evidence of this in general. Well, theory two is that there was some local boys who shot him and he protected their identities. You guys have to remember that Vincent probably looked pretty wild. 
He was very eccentric, had ratty clothes, wild hair, and also a missing ear. And teenage boys, who are the worst, were playing pranks on him. They would do awful things like throw salt in his coffee, rub chili powder on his dry paintbrush, which he tended to chew on. And they would even put a snake in his box of painting supplies. So this is what I actually think happened to Vincent Van Gogh. So one of the boys that was bullying Vincent was named Rene Secretin, who was quoted saying that his favorite game was making him mad, which was easy. And his oldest brother, Gaston, was actually an aspiring artist and liked Vincent. So Vincent was just nice and endured his little brother for their friendship. Well, Rene loved fishing and hunting, and he actually went to go see Buffalo Bill's Wild West show in Paris and came back with a full set of Western clothes, including a pistol and a holster, which again was rare. And the people outside the inn who saw Vincent walking said that he was going towards a spot where Renee usually goes fishing. So it's possible that they ran into each other, had a little incident, which resulted in Renee shooting him. And in a panic, the boys probably picked up his gun and art supplies, and that's why none of that could be found. And Vincent covered for them. Because after the shooting, Renee gets out their father left town, and Renee was quoted a decade later saying that Vincent had stolen the gun from him. And in the 1930s, some of the townspeople told a historian that young boys shot Vincent on accident and he protected their identity.